Let's talk about how to pass the Willis Towers Watson video interview. What's up guys, it's Mike from Job Ready English here to help you get hired. Today we're going to be talking about the insurance giant Willis Towers Watson and how to pass their video interview. In this video we're going to go through what their recruitment process is like and what you can expect from start to finish their most common questions and how to think about answering those questions and also some other questions that we've picked out that we found were really interesting or a bit weird or unexpected and how we would go about answering those questions. As ever, if you need more help with passing your Willis Towers Watson video interview, you can get our up-to-date research note that we're gonna be reading from today as well as courses, handouts, templates and sample answers in our Willis Towers Watson Pass the Interview Pack, which you can get in the link in the description below in this video. Let's start off by talking about Willis Towers Watson recruitment process. All of our information comes from publicly available sources, and this is what candidates have reported in the past six months. Process takes around six weeks to complete. The first step is to send in applications and then you'll get some online tests. You're then invited to sit a higher view video interview. You get two minutes to prepare and two minutes to answer. You're then asked to go to an assessment centre which has a group task and an in-person interview. We picked out seven most common questions asked. So these are questions that candidates have reported being asked multiple times. Question number one, why Willis Towers Watson? So you can check out the card up in the right hand corner where we go into this question in more detail and also you've got a work free worksheet to help you answer this question but when you're thinking about why do you want to work for a company if you've got two minutes you want to pick out five or six key facts the most important thing is make sure that the facts are specific and at least one or two of them are meaningful to you it could be a corporate social responsibility project something recently that Willis Towers Watson have done that has been in the news but make sure they be as specific as possible what's the litmus test for this well it's simple I can't say this about any other company I can only say it about Willis Towers Watson the most common mistake that I find with candidates when they answer this question is they're too vague and they're too generic so so many people basically be a bit lazy and say oh i really like them because they're big and they're famous and it'll be a great opportunity and the training's good well you could say that for any company so make sure you're as specific as possible with your facts try and do a broader range of facts and you can do your research it would only take you about 15 minutes maximum by going through a website about us history and your report uh, from the director statement it's really so easy to put together a couple of facts about the company question number two why do you want to do this role again check out the card up in the right hand corner because we've got a more in-depth video for this including the free worksheets that you can fill in this answer for yourself and we really break down this question now when you're thinking about why do you want to do this role, you want to answer this question in two parts. Make sure that you have the job description to hand. If the job description for Willis Towers Watson and the role that you're applying for is not particularly helpful, i.e. it's very salesy and it doesn't talk about the two things that we're interested in, which is what am I going to do day to day and what skills do I need, then just take the name of the job pop it into Google and find a similar job description from somewhere else. Or you can use one of my favorite websites, which is prospects.ac.uk. So in breaking down this question, you want to spend 60 seconds just explaining what you would do in the job. Now, importantly, for a higher view video interview, what they're really looking for is for you to be mentioning particular keywords. Now, of course, the higher view AI is quite complex and there are multiple variables that go into whether a candidate passes or not. But one thing that we do know is that the algorithm is going to be looking for you to be mentioning certain things that you're going to be doing in the job. So that's the first part. The second part is you want to pick out a couple of the key skills that have been laid out in the job description and just say, hey, if you want to be an actuarial graduate, then having really good numeracy skills would probably be helpful. So you want to say, well, I've got great numeracy skills because I got a first in mathematics from my bachelor's. That's a really simple way of going, here is the skill, here is the proof based on my experience. And you want to go through that for laying out how to answer why this role and why you're a good person to do this job. Question number three, what strengths and weaknesses do you have? Now in two minutes, this really isn't a lot of time to answer this question. I would pick out maybe two strengths and one weakness. So when you're picking out the strengths, I would suggest that you pick out a strength from the skills that are outlined. 
Very often what I tend to see candidates do is that they'll pick a strength, they say, oh, I'm really good at this thing. I say, that's great, but is that actually what they're asking for? And this is a really common theme that you want to think about when it comes to interviews, not just Willis Towers Watson, but interviews in general. When they ask a question, they're looking for something. There is something that they're looking to find in you. So don't just answer the question and say, ah, oh, this is what I'd say. You'd think, well, what are they looking for? So they're looking for you to demonstrate that you have the skills that are required to do the job. And when it comes to answering what is, you know, what is your weakness, I would pick out one. I tend to ascribe to picking out a weakness that is true, mainly because it's easier to talk about. A lot of times I tend to find candidates will sort of lay out a weakness which is not a weakness. Newsflash, we all have weaknesses. Or what they're going to do is, is that they're going to say, I work too hard, I struggle to say no, I'm a people pleaser. Ah, that's kind of true for most people in all honesty, and it's kind of true definitely for a lot of young people because we sort of, I tend to find that I've come into my element more in my 30s than in my 20s. But what you want to do is pick out something that is genuinely true. So for example, for me, I would say that, well, a weakness of mine is time management. I have a really busy schedule and before what has happened was I wouldn't plan out what I needed to do well enough in advance and I would end up missing deadlines, missing appointments, um, work would be submitted late so what I made sure to do was is that I plan out the week ahead on the Friday before I make sure that I review that plan on a Sunday everything gets diarised so if somebody wants to book a time to speak to me they get sent a link to my calendar and they can book in to see me and also each of my days are batched and I discuss that with our team when we have a meeting on the Monday and the Friday and that's how I have gotten better at time management and managed to systematize that process. You'll notice what I'm doing is I'm not basically turning around and saying, well, I was bad at time management and now I'm really good. I'm describing the process of how I got better because another way of looking at a weakness is just saying, well, look, this is something I'm not good at and this is what I'm doing to learn and to get better at this thing. Question number four, tell us about a time you worked in a team. Now, teamwork is a really common question across many, many different interviews. It's something that comes up fairly regularly when we break down companies for past the interview. So this is a good question to have in hand, whatever it is that you're talking about. Now, we want to use the STAR format, which is situation, task, action, result. If you're not familiar with STAR, I definitely suggest that this is something that you should look into. If you would like us to make a video about the STAR format and how to hack it, drop us a comment down in the description below. So with the STAR format, you're basically saying, where was I, what was I doing, what was the task that I did, what was the actions that I took, and what was the result that I achieved? Now with STAR, what you want to think about when we sort of break down where is the emphasis or the majority of your answer going to be, it's going to be in your action. I would say at least 60 if not 70% of your answer is based around the action. And the action that we really want to demonstrate, again when we think about what is the recruiter really looking for is, what is it that you have done that shows that you are good at teamwork? Now ideally your example should be from work, but if you don't have work experience, something outside of studies, that could be volunteering, extracurricular societies, hobbies, something of course in this case that involves other people. After that you can include academics, that's absolutely fine. The only reason why we ask for work experience is because we're applying for a job. So if we can use that experience then it shows that it's a similar-ish type of example. So when you're thinking about teamwork, all you need to do is really think what are good teamwork skills? What makes a good team player? Well, you know, they're open and honest, they're friendly, they understand what needs to be done, they try and pull together with other people to get the job done, they're helpful, they're easy to communicate with, they are soft when it comes to resolving conflict, they're concentrated on the team goal and they're not just thinking about themselves. Now you could put in four or five of these things into answering this question and really give the recruiter or the interviewer a good demonstration that you know what good teamwork is. Question number five, tell us about yourself. Check out the video up on the card above where we outline a really strong way to get a great personal introduction, including a free worksheet. But tell us about yourself is really pretty simple. So I say, what are you doing? What have you done? What would you like to do? Work experience, extracurriculars and hobbies, and finally, 
any interests or special skills. So when you're refining a personal introduction, if you've never done an interview before, I think that this is a question you should start off with because it really provides the basis for all interview practice. A really strong personal introduction can make a massive difference when it comes to feeling confident in the interview. So if you're a graduate student, you say, well, I'm currently studying X at Y, I was previously at another university at secondary school, I'd really like to work at X role in Y company, this is my work experience, these are the things that I've done outside of work which aren't studies, and then these are my hobbies, skills and interests or things that are of particular use to you. Something that I like about this as well is I like a little hook at the end, so if you clicked on that card and you went and downloaded our Tell Me About Yourself worksheet, then you'll find that I like a little hook at the end that comes from my professional writing experience, but just something that's quite interesting. So sometimes I might say, you know, when I was, you know, when I was 11 years old, I was a county or national level chess player, or I, I enjoy collecting coins in my spare time, or I'm a keen martial artist. Just something that, as we're having a conversation, may hook somebody in, they go, oh, that's really interesting, let's have a conversation. Really useful, particularly when you're doing something face-to-face, -face. and I know that if I'm having a face-to-face -face interview with somebody, and then we can actually strike up a conversation and connect on a personal level, it's much more likely that I'm gonna pass the interview. Question number six, when have you had to solve a problem in the workplace and how did you do this? Now, problem solving in the workplace, first of all, there may be some of you who are watching this video and you're like, oh, holy crap, like I don't have any experience of problem solving in the workplace. That's fine, just use something else. Say, look, actually, I haven't, when I went to university, I wanted to dedicate my time to my studies, but I have had problems come up in projects that we've done. There was a time when, and then you can launch into your star-based format. Now, a really important thing about outlining how you solve the problem, based upon common mistakes that I see candidates see, is number one, be really clear about what the problem is and explain that. This is actually quite common, particularly with people who studied STEM subjects. I find that they'll kind of lay out a problem and say, uh, we had a problem with a power plant design. And I'm like, wait, what? Always remember that a confused mind says no. So if I get confused at any point, my brain just kind of switches off because I'm now no longer paying attention to what you're saying. I'm trying to figure out what you just said. So just try and explain the problem and do it in such a way, that I like to use what I call either the grandma test or the five-year-old test, which is I'm explaining this to a five-year-old, I'm explaining this to my grandma on the phone. So there's a certain level of, I wouldn't say dumbing down, but simple language that needs to get used. Then go through the stages that you have to do logically and systematically to solve a problem. So you might say, well, we had a really angry customer come into the bank and I was in the lobby and I wanted to withdraw some cash because I had to go on holiday, but we have a particular limit. So, okay, that's the problem. So then what's the solution? So the first thing that I did was I took the customer into a private room and I explained to them that we have a particular limit on the amount of cash that can be taken out because we only have a certain amount of cash in the bank at the same time. Once the customer had calmed down a little bit and understood what was going on, they were still really upset because they didn't know that and they were due to go on holiday in two days. So I went to speak to my manager and asked if we could make an exception because that person was a really good customer when I looked them up on the system and if there's any way that we could either make the cash available at the bank or we could go and collect that cash from another bank or have it delivered and so on and so forth and then you move towards that solution. Question number seven, tell us about a time when you dealt with conflict in the workplace. Again, a super common question that you're gonna come across in multiple interviews. But bearing in mind, conflict doesn't mean a blazing rail. Conflict just means a disagreement. Um, very often in the workplace, particularly when you have you know, smart and passionate people who are very driven, they're gonna have differences of opinions, different styles and ways of doing things. And what you're gonna find is sometimes there's a clash right there's a conflict that you might have had this in the workplace you might have had this in a group project that you've done at university or it could be you know as part of a society so what you want to outline first of all is you know what is the nature of the conflict how do you handle conflict so something that i always say whether i'm talking to a member of the team or helping a candidate is that when we're dealing with conflict the first thing that we want to do is is kind of try and separate the parties if we can we, we would discuss it all together i like to speak to people one-to-one -one if there's a conflict and my first question tends to be what's going on <laughs> 
if that person is acting erratically or has become particularly upset or a little bit volatile, I would say eight or nine times out of 10 is to do with an issue that is outside of the workplace. That could be something in their personal life or they may just have a problem with that other person and say, well, the other day they said this and now, and I say, oh, okay, so you've got a resentment and now you're taking it out on them because there's an opportunity for you to disagree. But by being able to hear and listen to that person, even if it's five minutes, I can find really quickly it de-escalates the situation, right? So now I understand what the problem is. And the next thing that I wanna do is think, well, how can we reach the goal that we're trying to do? Maybe we have to uh, clean the kitchen and there's five of us and there's been an argument. Maybe we have to get a group project done, but ultimately, conflict aside, we still need to get the project done. So how can we keep this thing moving forward? So what's the compromise? Could it be sitting those two people down and getting them to explain things to each other and just to communicate? That tends to be where a lot of conflict comes from. It's just bad communication or even worse, no communication. When people don't communicate at all with each other and they just kind of stew and get more and more angry and then they're like, boom, and then they explode. Yeah, and then what are the stages that I went through to resolve that conflict and to move forward towards the goal? So finally, here are a couple of other questions and a quick fire round that we just found interesting. Um, what is your biggest achievement? I like biggest achievements that are real, that are personal and really mean something to you. And I would typify this was with uh, if I saw somebody who I really liked and admired and I could only tell one story, then this is the story that I tell. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Here at Willis Towers Watson, wherever I would be in the management process. Tell us about a time that you faced a challenge the challenge should be something significant. Um, a lot of times I hear people respond to this challenge with just like, oh, I was having a really difficult time at school. Now that's not to diminish that, but when I kind of dig in and say, look, is that really something that when you look back on it, you feel defined you as a person, changed you, made you grow, mature, become a better person. You getting through that, you feel has kind of really kind of leveled you up in a way. That's what I define as a challenge. What previous experience do you have for this role? This is a question that's gonna catch a lot of people out because they might say, well, I haven't done this specific role before. Remember, any job has transferable skills. So most jobs, there'll be an element of teamwork, interpersonal skills, numeracy, leadership, decision-making, problem-solving, and so on and so forth. So it doesn't have to be exactly related. And if not, that's the same for extracurriculars, volunteering, academics. Whatever it is that you're doing, there is a transferable skill that you can outline. So just use those skills if you haven't done the precise job role before. And finally, what are the company's values? Welcome to Google. Make sure you pop those in and have those written down on a piece of paper somewhere just in case this question comes up. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget if you want more help for the quickest and fastest way to effectively prepare for your Willis Towers Watson video interview, check out the past the interview pack down in the description below. How did we do? Drop us a comment down below. Let us know how your interview went or let us know what other companies you'd like us to cover. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I wish you the best of luck. See you later.